Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about lakes. Lakes are an easily accessible source of fresh water. A lake is a body of water that is surrounded by land. It can have salt water or fresh water, but in this video, we are going to talk about fresh water lakes. Lakes carry about 0.007% of world water. Even if it seems like very little amount of water, the 0.007% of Earth's water is actually a huge quantity. And lakes vary in terms of size, shape and depth. Lakes are also a dynamic aquatic ecosystem. It have different levels of uh, trophic levels of organisms, primary producers, consumers, secondary consumers, predators and everything. And we also make uh, artificial lakes and reservoirs to address water scarcity issues. Importance of lakes. Lakes are essentially a multi-purpose and extensively used resources. Uh, it has importance in providing drinking water, irrigation, flood control, aquatic production and fisheries, transportation, hydropower generation, conservation of biodiversity because it is a uh, reservoir of biodiversity then it has recreational values then religious and religious and spiritual significance and it's also provide livelihood for many lakeshore communities so what are the problems or threats associated with the lakes here i have listed so many threats associated with the lakes especially the water quality uh, ranges from eutrophication to climate change and i will be talking about each of these uh, threats to the lakes in detail and remember this lakes and rivers are both of them are surface water resources and most of these threats affects both the eutrophication it affects rivers as well as the lakes so they share so much in common so in this session i am going to talk about threats to lakes and in the following session we will be talking about uh, rivers so eutrophication you will be very much similar familiar with eutrophication it's a war, war, global issue and it's a primary cause of lake deterioration eutrophication is actually a natural aging process it's a process of aging of lakes lakes will get uh, so much amount of runoff from different areas and this leads to the accumulation of nutrients in the lakes and eventually it leads to the eutrophication but what is happening here is like human activities has accelerated the process of aging of lakes or the eutrophication so it's basically characterized by accumulation of the limited substances or uh, growth limiting substances in a lake there are different growth limiting substances which include sunlight carbon dioxide and the nutrient uh, nutrients in human induced in eutrophication what happens is like nutrients will be accumulated in the lakes in huge quantities the limited nutrients in in ordinary lakes they have limited amount of nitrogen and phosphorus but uh, when we are applying fertilizers to the agriculture farm or we are dumping the waste in a lake what happens is like the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus in a lake will increase which leads to the increased production of algae and which leads to uh, the changes ecosystem changes in the lakes so the primary cause of uh, eutrophication is the excessive nutrients uh, it can came from non point sources or point sources the point sources including the discharges from the industry or dumping of waste things like that uh, or uh, like uh, the effluent from the wastewater treatment plant can be a point source non point sources including the water runoff from the agricultural plants or the domestic areas so this containing huge amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus and this can cause uh, eutrophication and once the nutrients accumulated in the water what happens is like it will promote the growth of algae and this algae by growing it it will be accumulated in the ponds and we can see that the green color algae in the whole portion of the lakes and due to this algal growth it harm water quality it reduce the water transparency so uh, like it when the algae is growth they limit the light penetrance and reducing the growth and causing die off of plants in the lakes the ground they may have some plants that will be die off and it also affect the predators in the water and uh, high rate of photosynthesis by this algae leads to the increased uh, to deplete the dissolved inorganic carbon 
it writes the pH of the legs and it uh, also impairs the organism's chemosensory abilities. And after the growth, what happens is like these organisms will die off. During the time of death, it is decomposed by other bacteria. The process of decomposition actually use huge amount of oxygen. And this depletion of the oxygen is leads to the creation of a dead soil. Because the when the water oxygen is reduced, the uh, organisms living in the water or the lakes will be suffer from the anoxic conditions and they will die. Okay. And at the one end, we are losing the important species, important fisheries and other organisms in the water due to the depleted oxygen. The other end, the accumulated heavy metals and the pollutants within this organisms in the fishes be released again into the water bodies. And it leads to the significant loss of biodiversity and the ecosystem degradation in the lakes. So in the shallow uh, lakes, what happens is like the eutrophication promote the growth of uh, like the floating plants or floating weeds like water hyacinths. They will grow because of the presence of huge amount of nutrients. And uh, it, uh, the eutrophication is associated with the major changes in aquatic community and the ecosystem structure. Sometimes the eutrophication is also associated with the harmful algal blooms. The algae which is grow in the uh, lakes due to the increased nutrients will produce some type of toxins, neotoxins and these toxins are ha harmful for humans as well as for the aquatic organisms and which is also a concern. The, one of the organisms which is producing this type of co toxin is different types of cyanobacteria which includes anabina, microcyst, etc. So how to control eutrophication? The easiest way to control eutrophication is to prevent the nutrient input into the uh, ponds but it's that is not easy because the nutrients are coming from different sources uh, if it is a point source the control is easy because an industrial output uh, like effluent is causing the pollution we can actually stop that uh, effluent coming into the lakes or if a water treat wastewater treatment plant effluent is causing the problem we can stop that but most of these problems are associated with the non-point sources because farmers are applying agriculture uh, fertilizers in their uh, in their field and during the time of rain and runoff, this new this fertilizer, say part of the fertilizer is coming into the lakes. That's a non-point source because the lake is getting water from different areas. And if you are stopping the use of fertilizers, we do not can, we cannot actually get the crops. So there should be a fine balance between the application of the fertilizers and the uh, like uh, the uh, health of the lakes. So eutrophication can be controlled by removing the nutrients, but it is not easy always. There should be legislations and laws to prevent the use of excessive nutrients and uh, discharging the uh, waste into the uh, lakes. So there are different techniques in practice to prevent eutrophication which includes diversion of excess nutrients, altering the nutrient ratio or physical mixing of the lakes. Or if we cannot actually prevent the nutrient input, what we can do, we can cover the uh, surface of the water with something opaque so that the photosynthetic algae do not grow. Then uh, we can also use the algicides or herbicides to prevent the growth of algae and the water weeds or we can use the biomanipulation techniques like uh, introduction of a predator to uh, like consume this algae or plankton so that it won't, it won't die off uh, so it do not cause the uh, depletion in the oxygen. So that's about eutrophication. The second threat to lakes is acidification. Uh, it can be caused by different reasons. One is due to the climate change, which is associated with the acid rain. The, uh, if the acid precipitation occurs, acid rain occurs, the lake water can become acidic. Or it can be due to the drainage from the industry. If any industry is using acids and is uh, like discarding this acid into a lake, they can, the lake can become acidic. And finally, some of the natural causes can actually make the lake acidic, which include the volcanic activities and the natural emission of gases. So these are the three major causes of acidification of lakes. During the acidification, the pH of the lake water will reduce and which will actually negatively affect the uh, lake community and the ecosystem. Next is toxin contamination. Toxin contamination uh, is the toxic substances originated from industrial activities, mining or the agriculture practices end up in the uh, lakes. And there are different types of toxins which can come into the lakes which including 
chlorine chlorinated biphenyls which include so much of the our pesticides and herbicides are coming to the pcbs or it can be due to the heavy metals like mercury arsenic lead nickel cadmium etc so uh, the thing is that if this toxic components end up in a lake which will eventually come into humans because of the bioaccumulation this mercury we all know about the mercury if mercury is in the water it will be consumed by the lower organisms and eventually this uh, enter into the food chain and we, when we are consuming the fishes from the same pond we will be getting the toxin into our body so uh, this toxic community, uh, components have variety of health effects uh, it can cause mutation it can produce irregular reproduction disappearance of sensitive species and it will it affect human health also then next is water level changes uh, the water level changes cause the deterioration of lakes there are significant changes in water levels uh, it can be due to the withdrawal of water from the lakes or from the excessive withdrawal from inflowing or outflowing water or diversion of the uh, inflowing water or maybe due to the construction of dams in a river because actually the, if the river is feeding the lake that can cause the problems or the climate change also co cause the water level changes if the water level of a lake is reduced it will affects all aspects of the lakes which ingl which decrease the lakes volume and surface area it affects its fish population it affects its ecosystem it also leads to uh, the deterioration of the water quality etc so how to prevent the level water level changes to prevent the water level changes we should maintain the water input into the lakes next is salinization salinization is increase the concentration of salt in the lake Uh, which can be caused by uh, decrease in, in uh, lake water if the water level is decreased the salt in the water will be accumulated there and it will become more and more concentrated or over use of water for drainage or the global climate change if the water is become saline it affect the water community the ecosystem in the water and the water become less fit for human consumption and other uses it reduce the biodiversity and Uh, it, uh, if we want to use the lake water for consumption, we need extensive treatment. Next is litigation. Uh, it is due to the accelerated soil erosion leads to the excessive loading of suspended solids in the lakes. So it uh, leads to the increased accumulation of uh, fine sediments, and uh, it uh, due to this litigation. Uh, rapid accumulation of sediments within lakes occurs at increase the turbidity of the water the significantly reduce in the number of living organisms decrease biodiversity and it causes the habitat alteration so preventing erosion and dredging is a solution for uh, this next is introduction of exotic species the exotic non species non native species can be introduced uh, into the uh, is introduced into the lakes uh, intentionally or unintentionally Uh, unintentional uh, introduction may be due to the some accidental release of organisms or the release of the ornamental plants or ornamental animals or fishes uh, intentionally sometimes people release organisms into the lakes for the commercial fisheries because the uh, non native species fish population may give better growth and uh, better value for the fishery so people introduce and the introduction of this exotic species has uh, devastating consequences uh, in the lake ecosystem and uh, lake communities it leads to the disappearance of native species loss of biodiversity uh, alteration in the trophic equilibrium significant reduction in the species diversity it leads to promote the algal blooms because if the native species are gone uh, the algal bloom can be more more frequent so uh, the solution for this uh, introduction of exotic species is like never introduce exotic species so totally by legislation prevent the uh, introduction of exotic species also it is important to see that if the exotic species is accidentally released into the lakes we should have mechanisms to manage the species or capture the species and remove it from the lakes then overfishing the uh, lakes are subjected to over har harvesting of resources especially the fishes if the fishes are captured more than its reproduction capacity the overall fish population in the lakes will reduce dramatically so uh, the overfishing uh, and the unscientific way of fishing also leads to the habitat uh, destruction of the uh, lakes so the solutions for preventing overfishing is strict laws and regulations protecting lakes uh, advanced fishing techniques 
aquaculture and consumer awareness then next is pathogenic contamination of uh, lakes this pathogenic contamination is most of time it is occurs due to the sewage runoff or the uh, effluent from the uh, wastewater treatment plants and this contamination can cause uh, diseases to humans and the ecosystem other organisms and fecal contamination is very much common in the lakes uh, and uh, diarrhea and cholera are the diseases caused by the fecal contamination of the lakes and uh, developed and developing countries are affected by this uh, contaminated lakes or contaminated water finally the climate change climate change actually affect the uh, lake the water quality parameters can be easily affected by climate change the global warming is leads to the increased temperature which leads to the stratification acidification of lakes and alterations in residence times in lakes so so many negative effects are there for the climate change how to prevent these changes to prevent uh, take actions to reduce the climate change and the carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide emission thank you for listening in the next video i'll be talking about rivers thank you